Some argue that individuals who divorce may be more likely to repeat the pattern in future relationships, leading to a cycle of instability. Okay. I'm your third relation. Yeah, I'm my third long-term relationship. Long-term. And it's the same for you. You are my third. Do you think that there can be, there could be a fourth one for you? I'm not planning on it. I'm not <laughs> planning on it, but... I mean, if it happens, it happens. If right? it happens, it happens, You move right? on and you, you, you try to live your life, but... Yeah, no. You're not with me because you are desperate. I'm and, not uh, worried. You are looking for uh, yeah. stability and... No, and I'm not so particularly that. worried that, like, because you've been in two relationships that didn't work before, that this one is on a pattern. Like, that just seems that just seems silly to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, as for myself, like, uh, I believe that what is good is to be true to yourself. Mm-hmm. And if you are not, if you are being true to yourself and you are not finding yourself at the place you should be, mm-hmm. where you are value, valued, where, how you should be valued and loved, how you should be loved, right? You have the right to move on. Either it is for the second time or the third time or the fourth time, you are totally allowed. That's, yeah. that's how I see things. Yeah. You know, um, the goal is to be true to yourself and, you know. Yep, for sure. If you're happy, say you're not happy, leave. <laughs> Find you. Oh. Mm-hmm. Hi, everybody. Um, welcome back again on our uh, channel, The Feminist Family. I am Pamela. I'm Corey. Yes, and we are the Feminist Family, and we are very happy uh, to be entertaining you and uh, sharing with you every um, two weeks uh, what our thoughts are regarding living and believing in. Mm-hmm. That wasn't bad nope. as an intro. That's pretty good. Total intro. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so... Thank you very much if you are here uh, for uh, the second or the third time mm-hmm. or if you are a regular, we do appreciate and uh, most of all, we do appreciate when you leave us a comment and you tell us what you think about uh, our point of view, uh, knowing that we are evolving. But mm-hmm. let's say that in feminism, we believe that we are um, adults in feministing. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we believe in. We're well educated. But there is still room to grow. So Yeah. That we're not uh we're not taking like the bad faith arguments. We're not taking like the the superficial arguments that you hear over and over and over again on the internet. Like we're not going to be de- taking that stuff because we've just learned too much. <laughs> but we are still learning. But we are still learning. It's a process. So, and um, Corey, uh, one of the remarks that I've been getting um, this week was um, that feminism uh, promotes divorce, separation, okay. and this is something that we've already uh, discussed many times, yeah. right? Uh, so, do you consider yourself? as someone who promotes divorce. Hell yes. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yes. I think I think that people deserve to be happy in their lives and if they aren't happy in a relationship, then they have the right and should have the ability to uh, end that. And that's all I think relation or divorce is is just an ending of a relationship. And uh, yeah. It's just the end of a relationship, right? Basically, um, it's okay to divorce and move on because uh, the goal is to to be true to yourself, I guess. It's to to be in a marriage because you think that that's the best for you to be in that marriage. The moment um, you believe that's not at all the right thing, even though you believed in that. Uh, before we think that it's okay to be true to yourself yep. and true to your partner and move on and that's something that we have already done that's something that they say that most feminists 
um, uh, don't last in a relationship. What do you think that's the reason? Or what do you think about that? Well, I don't, I don't think that, I think that's a nonsense argument, mm -hmm. really. Like, uh, obviously, many feminists across the world have long lasting relationships of various kinds, whether they be polyamorous, monogamous, marriage, common law, just partners, just boyfriend, girlfriend, like many people have many different dynamics of relationship. And many of those people are feminists. And, you know, who's to judge whether a relationship is like successful or not based on, you know, yeah, anything other than the happiness of the people involved. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I guess uh, when people are getting married, they are not thinking uh, right away to divorce, right? But no. I believe that that's something that should be there. I believe that people should be together and remain together because they really want it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because they know that divorce is a possibility. And so they are all doing all it takes to remain in that relationship. If you value your relationship, then you'll put in the work, then you'll put in the effort to be with that person. If you're just in it because you're married and you can't get out, that's not a relationship worth keeping. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just, it doesn't make any sense to me to stay in an unhappy place. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the question, uh, do we promote divorce? Yes, we do. But I don't hundred percent. I do promote it. I, what? Well, I just want to say, like, I think, like, in the feminist theory of you know academics and the world and people who write about feminism, I think that there's room for discussion about whether or not you know there's value in different types of you know marriage as an institution or marriage as just an act of like caring or or what have you. There's a variety of takes on it. And yeah, like absolutely, I'm I'm pro divorce. I'm I feel like most feminists are, at the very least, pro divorce. Even if you know they're not out there, nobody's out there trying to say, "Hey, you have to end your marriage." No, <laughs> <laughs> but we want you to be able to ma end your marriage if you don't want to be in it anymore. Exactly. No one should be forced into a marriage <laughs> just because you, you, you choose uh, at 20, 24 years old or even 30 uh, to be married to someone. It doesn't mean that you cannot change your mind. We need to leave the room for that and normalize it. Yeah. So um, we thought that this, um, this show would be very quick if we're talking about <laughs> <laughs> do we promote um, divorce yeah. because... Obviously, we are on the same page. Yeah. So guess what? We went on and um, found the 10 arguments against divorce. Yeah. Right? So that we can do that game and debunk <laughs> all of that. Okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, the first one is uh, commitment. Hmm? Marriage is a sacred commitment. And proponents argue that couples should walk through challenges rather than giving up on divorce. Do you think that we promote divorce because we are not, uh, we don't believe that couples should go through challenges and uh, walk them? I think I think that couples who who are committed to the relationship, whether they've had vows or not, whether they've been in a church and said it before their religious leader or not uh, work f if you value your relationship you will put in the effort to get through the challenges in, in place and if you don't value re value your relationship then there's no point in staying in it mm -hmm. but there is this uh, character of uh, you know the sacred commitment oh, I, yeah. the sacred commitment <laughs> what I'm never convinced when people use the word sacred it just doesn't mean anything to me <laughs> <laughs> You believe what you want to believe, but you can't apply that to everybody in the world. To everybody. That's, <laughs> that's the thing. And, um, and even because I grew up in a, in, a, in a Christian family, right? And yeah. I, I still have many friends who are Christian. I'm, I would say if I had to pick, I would You're be nominally more Christian. Christian. <laughs> um, there is that, you know, um, idea that, you know, you, you made that vow in front of God, you know, and uh, everybody. And therefore... You uh, cannot, you know, uh, unvow it. How would you say? Yeah, 
You can't renege. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But the way I understand it is like, okay, let's admit that. You, okay? Okay. That you're doing something that no, that's not usual. The thing that you're doing is maybe a sin. It's going to be seen as a sin, right? Okay. You went against the vow that you did to someone to okay. commit for life, whether, you know, in good situation or bad, whatever they say. Sure. But who doesn't sin? Well, isn't that yeah. the thing of you know religion? Is that well, we all are sure, sinners for sure, right? Christianity. So if you <laughs> feel that you are not in a good relationship, that's not for you. That's not uh, serve where you wanna be and how you wanna feel. It's okay to even call that a sin. Sure. And then go and repent. It doesn't sure. mean that each, each time if you commit a sin, yeah. you can go and repent. It doesn't mean that you need to repay. It doesn't mean that you need to absolutely go back with that person. And here's the thing. You can move on. You here's know? the thing. Even, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, my love. I don't buy any of that. Okay. Uh, but <laughs> it's, it's, it's about belief. You know, but if even you don't if, believe, of course you don't. You, if, you won't. Yeah, exactly. But if even if you believe that you broke a vow to God, Mm -hmm. And that that's, you know, your religious, you sinned, whatever. That's between you and your belief, your deity, that your God, your beliefs leader, whatever. It has nothing to do with anybody else. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. <laughs> so the second argument against divorce okay. is the family stability. Divorce okay. can disrupt family stability, especially for children leading to emotional distress and uncertainty about the future. Okay. You want to take that's this a, or you want me to that's go? A good argument. <laughs> I mean, that's I, an argument. You know, an there argument. is the family stability, but of course they're going to be, um, you know, how can, uh, how, how can we, what's, how are we going to remain uh, stable when we are divorced? As, for example, parents. It's well, a walk, right? Yeah, that's right. It's work. That's, and it's going to be work in the relationship or out of the relationship. Exactly. So, like, <laughs> and lots of children who have two parents who stay together and stay at home have really messed up things going on. It's not a, it's not a matter of, like, one thing being 100%, you know, per percent better than the other one. Like, it's just, <laughs> like, there's a... I can come up with in my head like a scenario, right, you know, of the two people who stay together because they feel like they have to because it's their vows or whatever. Mm -hmm. But they're miserable together. And so they mm -hmm. create a miserable household. And a child or children are raised in a miserable environment. How is that better than two people who separated and are happy? Like, how, you know, it doesn't make actual sense. <laughs> I mean, it's not the fact of being married or divorced that's going to make that, for example, for the kids, that they're going to have a stability. No. It's about the stability of the two parents, whether they are together or not. Yes. Actually. If, right? if somebody's toxic in those environments, that's going to matter more than whether or not the parents are together or not. Yeah, exactly. And that's a thing that I didn't know, actually. Mm. Yeah, because uh, we tend to, to say that, you know, uh, um, if, you know, if, if you're not happy with someone, just, you know, move on. Mm. You can quit. But when you are co-parenting, unfortunately, you're going to see that it's the same thing. Like, you're yeah. going to have to deal with that person in the same exact manner and it's yeah. yucky. Yeah, you still got to deal with their toxicity. Exactly. Which, again, confirm what we were saying, right? Either you are married or not. Yeah. You know, it depends are, upon the stability and yeah. the way the two parents are, you know, yep. parenting the or co-parenting, the dynamic. Yep. You know, it's not about being together or not because sometimes you can be separated and the kids going to have more stability with parents who are happier in their life mm -hmm. because uh, they were not happy together. They were, you know, their couple wasn't working very well and now they are separated and each of them is now in a new relationship where, you know, they are more finding what they were looking for, therefore happier. Then kids gonna be, have a childhood 
which is stable yeah. in that way. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So the third argument, uh, we go back to the religious belief. Many <laughs> don't do like that. <laughs> Okay, don't do like that because you know uh, the people who follow us may believe. Uh, you believe know, everybody what you want. can believe in believe what the you want. They want. You right? don't get to impose it on others. That That's just it. not That's your the thing. Line. Exactly. So many religions um, discourage divorce, considering marriage to be um, a lifelong commitment that should be honored. Okay, if you're in that religion, then you can deal with that in the way that you deal with it. In your religious beliefs, as long as, you know, do what's compatible with what you as a human feel is true. Mm -hmm. You don't get to tell me what to do. You don't get to tell other women what to do. You don't get to tell other men what to do. But at the same time, um, I fail to see any other area of our life where we're going to apply that same thing. You know, because, for example, uh, in study. in studies, you know, I can study medicine, you know, yeah. to become a doctor and... The first year I am a doctor, I'm like, ugh, you know, I hate being at the hospital and this is not at all what I want to do. And guess what? What I would like to do is to be a journalist. So after um, seven years or plus two of, you know, specialization and yeah. you are, you were, you know, you already invested a lot. You still have the right to change your path, you know, and yeah. start something else. And even at work, you know, you can start a career and then later decide to change. Even the country, we decide to move countries, yeah. right? We grow, you yeah. know, we are growing. And in all other area of the life, we have um, that opportunity to be wrong or to, you know, to, mm. to change mm -hmm. our path. And I believe that even marriage should be the same. I find it odd that... Religions would ask uh, two people who never lived together um, just because they chose together, when they chose together, um, then they're going to start to live together and make it work absolutely without yeah. uh, any way to saying like, let's say that, you, you know, yeah, okay, I believe you believed in that and hey, that person, that's not a person who's making you happy. You're going to do What stay with that person yeah, and, and it's, absolutely commit because I don't know. It, because of what yeah because it, it's hard for me to take it seriously because there's religions that like basically enforce mm -hmm. people getting married against their will or you know when, before they're ready to you know before they're even really aware of what's happening with marriage mm -hmm. like so it's hard for me to take the religious argument seriously like. I think I think that people should allow themselves to have their religious beliefs, but it's just like you can't you can't expand that beyond your own personal group or your your particular religious belief system. Mm -hmm. The financial impact divorce can have significant financial consequences, including the division of assets alimony payments and legal fees which may negatively affect both partners okay yeah it's hard that's a thing yeah no it's hard uh, the There's financial no burden <laughs> of divorce is pretty heavy because you were building with someone you were two uh, yeah. person building um their life together and once there is one of them uh especially financially who decide to leave the boat, yeah. it's a burden. Yeah, um, like imagine trying to make ends meet on your own, yeah. you know. And especially when, when they are kids, right? Especially yeah. when they are kids, because yeah. if there are no kids, then, you know, um, yeah. But, but if, if there are kids and you still have as a parent to plan, you know, to get your kids and the other parents, it's like, it's like it's going to be two houses, Yeah. You know, it was one house, you were sharing yeah. all the finances. Yeah. So you're cutting your total household thing. income in half and you're doubling your costs. So it's a thing. Divorce <laughs> it's, it's hard. comes with a cost. Yeah. But again, that's a cost that's um great to pay and to work for. Sometimes um, some I mean, if we had a healthy society, then things would be easier. But we don't. We don't. So it's one of these things yeah. like you just, it is, it is, I don't, I can't say that it isn't going to be expensive, but it is, it's going to be hard. Uh, but 
it's mm. a price that we pay, you know, if, if that, if, you know, if we're not happy and we need to move on. Mm-hmm. Social stigma. In some communities or cultures, uh, divorce carries a social stigma, leading individuals to stay in unhappy marriages to avoid judgment or ostracism. Ostracism. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I don't find that to be an argument in favor of staying in marriages. I find that to be an argument against the societies and cultures that apply social stigma to people who get divorced. But that's a fact. You know, when you divorce, it comes also with a social uh, price, I would say. Yeah. Um, divorce comes with, uh, you know, um, cutting friends. Yep. Cutting um, all the things that you are sharing with the other person are at risk, depending on, you know, the way you are getting separated or uh, if you are, you know, meeting other people and uh, going on, right, yep. with, uh, with, uh, with your life. It's something that comes like socially, it has an impact, yep. you know. That's something that each time I'm talking with uh, uh, people who um, went through divorce, um, that's something that they're going to say, whatever they are, right? Yeah. Uh, there is that stigma that comes with uh, being a, a divorced person. Did you suffer that? Uh, I don't think so. You told me you you. I lost friends. friends. Yeah. You lost friends. Uh, yeah, like yeah. I lost a lot of friends, but that's it wasn't. I don't think it was because that's the thing. Like if you if you reach a point in your sep you where you're separating, mm-hmm. and you've had your lives intermingled, well, then your friends have mm-hmm. to pick one side or the other where they go depending on their loyalties. Yeah, and yeah. It comes divorce come with a social uh, stigma, but hey. I, I really don't mind uh, social stigma, um, but feeling peace in my, you know, in yeah, my heart that right. I'm living, being true to myself. I really don't mind the social uh, stigma, but that's something to accept, right? Yep. That comes with, um, you know, being divorced. And uh, yeah, that's a, that's a cost, a social cost, yep. the stigma. But it's okay. <laughs> because as I already say, like some doors... Are gonna close and uh, you know that means oh, that yeah. others are opening right sometimes it's a thing, right yeah and uh, also the people some people are in our life for a season right yeah some people i mean and yeah like, some people are in your life for that season of you yeah. being married to yeah. that person yeah. and um and it's okay uh yeah. to move on there is no hate in that right emotional toll Divorce often involves emotional pain, grief, and loss for both partners, as well as their families and friends. Mm. Emotional toll. Of course. There is an emotional price, you know. Yeah, like, of course. Because somehow, when you, are, when you get with someone, when you get in a relationship, when you are married to someone, you are building something, right? Something that is family-oriented, yeah. right? And when there is divorce, then there is those things that won't be anymore. These are the birthdays. These are the, you know, uh, regular uh, celebration of life, New yeah. Year's, um, birthdays, you know. Um, yeah, there's, yeah, I mean, I mean, Mother's there's, Day. <laughs> there is literally an emotional price that you pay. You grieve the loss of that mm-hmm. relationship. You, yeah. you do it in different ways, different people, like... Often they say that the person who initiates the divorce has already gone through the grieving process to some degree, while the person who is told after the fact mm-hmm. is is often has to grieve on their own. But there's like there is of course an emotional toll to this. But mm-hmm. again, it's like is this price worth paying? This is a personal choice that you have to make for yourself. Is mm-hmm. the price worth paying? To be true to yourself, to be way in, in a place where you're not with someone you're not happy with. To give yeah. yourself the chance to be happy with someone else, perhaps, in the future. Yeah, but it's also the same as the doors, right? Um, those emotions, we, we stay there, right? Uh, tell me, like, for example, um, you've been for a very long time than me in uh, co-parenting, mm-hmm. and it worked, right? Uh, do you feel now... Okay, if you are not like with your kids on uh, birthdays, for example. Oh yeah, no, yeah, for sure. It stays right. Yeah, they're fine. Yeah. Like, 
I mean, you, the thing is, like, we have communication devices. Mm-hmm. We can we can call them and like say, "Hey, I love you. Happy birthday." Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, you find a way. You find a way. Exactly. That won't be like as you expected, but again, you stay in a relationship because you would like to keep that. Those same birthday is gonna yeah. feel like so bad. Like that's right. <laughs> All the birthday that you're gonna be with a person that you don't like, that you're not happy with. Yeah, you gotta weigh those uh, those uh, counterbalances. Yeah, yeah. Legal uh, complexity. Ooh. The divorce process can be lengthy, complex, and costly, involving negotiations over property, custody, and other legal matters. That's the of that is ugh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. Obviously, that's true. You need yeah. if you're in a if you're separating from someone who's pretty reasonable, then it doesn't mm-hmm. have to be really bad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But no matter what, there's times where you feel like you're the one who got screwed over, and everybody in a relation in a divorce is going to feel that way at some point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, but again, I find that uh, even if it's really, uh, uh, you're like when you are with a person where it's not working at all, and uh, you know that mentally or emotionally you are already separated but you are living together and then you have to make those kind of decisions regarding your investments your uh it's it's worse (laughs) it's worse that's why even on that side i'm like better divorce than uh uh, i'll pay that price yeah. yeah pay that price because honestly when you are discussing like finances with a person that you're not even connected emotionally yeah. That you you don't feel like committed, like mm-mm. yeah, no. you're just losing your time. Get out. <laughs> Impact on children. Uh huh. Children of um, divorced parents uh, may experience emotional and behavioral challenges, including lower academic achievement, higher rates of uh, substance abuse, and difficulties forming stable relationships. Well, I mean, first. I'd, I'd have to say, like, for these claims on statistics, like, statistical claims needs citations. <laughs> I don't know 100% true whether or not these rates are higher among divorced families than they are among stable families or what, whatever, quote unquote, stable families. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, but also, I mean, yeah, I just don't, I just, that's where I, my stick, my head goes. Like, like I cannot accept it. Like, I don't see how there's this correla, uh, correlation or causational effect necessarily i think that's uh that's an argument um that comes from the fact that you know um they're gonna be like okay the kid's gonna be more with uh if they, the kid's gonna be more with their mom uh then they are not gonna have th- these uh father figure or uh you know this that they're gonna be an impact on them but again again i'm like we're talking about divorce let's consider that someone can die yeah. Which is yeah. Permanent. Way more traumatic. You know? Yeah. So one of the parents can die. You still have two parents if you're in divorce. You still have two parents. But again, that's what we were saying. If those are not stable parents, those are not committed parents yeah. who are committing to the education of their kids uh, together, whether they are together, married in the same house or separated, uh, it will only have an incidence on the kids if they are bad between themselves, we right? Haven't... If they are all supporting their kids, yeah. there is no reason that a kid going to be like, a, you know, um, having a lower academic achievement just because his parents are separated. It's because of all the other some kids, Some kids, them. like lots of kids do just fine because when they have two separate parents that care for them and, and take care of them and can, mm. you know, can get along in a civil fashion. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know, uh, it may not, I don't know what number we're on, but like when you think of two people who don't want to be together and like, so they stay together you know. just for the sake of the kids or finances or some external reason outside of their own happiness. And you think like, if that, you know, those two people are unhappy to begin with, but they stay together, they try to tough it out. That's likely to build a resentment towards each other, right? Like the you're kid's gonna, gonna be, feel that. Yeah, you're you're building in a resentment inside your home, inside your relationships with everyone around you, 
Like you're going to act, that's going to come out in some ways mm-hmm. that, that is going to affect, yeah, your children. And, and I feel like nobody's measuring how the damage that's done by parents who stay together. <laughs> it's going to be the same if there is a resentment, if there is a, if there are the two parents fighting in front of their kids, whether they're married or not, you know, whether yeah, they are separated right. or not. Again, it's not about being together. Th- that's the issue. Right. Or that's going to change anything in that. It's the relationship. It's the behavior. It's the quality, yeah. of, it's the quality of the two parents. Yeah, that's it's right. the quality of parenting. And that, it doesn't matter whether yeah. they are together or not. No. The consequences are going to be the same if they are bad. Yeah, you know? that's right. It's going to... So, future relationship patterns. Some argue that individuals who divorce may be more likely to repeat the pattern in future relationships, leading to a cycle of instability. Okay. I'm your third relation. Yeah, I'm my third long-term relationship. Long-term. And it's the same for you. You are my third. Do you think that there can be, there could be a fourth one for you? I'm not planning on it. I'm not planning on it, <laughs> but... I mean, if it happens, it happens. If right? it happens, it happens, You move right? on and you, you, you try to live your life, but yeah, no. You're not with me because you are desperate. I'm and, not uh, worried. You are looking for uh, yeah. stability and... No, and I'm not so that, particularly so that, worried that like because you've been in two relationships that didn't work before that this one is on a pattern like that just seems that just seems silly to me yeah <laughs> yeah um as for myself like uh, i believe that what is good is to be true to yourself mm-hmm. and if you are not if you are being true to yourself and you are not finding yourself at the place you should be mm-hmm. where you are value valued where, how you should be valued and loved how you should be loved right you have the right to move on either it is for the second time or the third time or the fourth time you are totally allowed that's yeah. that's how i see things yeah. you know um the goal is to be true to yourself and you know yep yeah, for sure if you're happy say you're not happy leave <laughs> find find it yeah find what makes you happy find find the stability and be with someone who is also ready to, uh, you know, to to give what you what you need, right? Yep. So the tenth argument. Okay. Yes, regrets. <laughs> Divorce can lead to feelings of regret or remorse, especially if couples later realize that they could have walked through their issues and salvaged the marriage. Did you know mm-hmm. that if you break up with somebody? Mm-hmm. But then you both figure out that you're still in love. You can get back together. That's a thing that people can do. It's a thing. People can do it. Yeah. I'm not going back. (laughs) No. I mean, I find find it to be once people process the grief of going through a a mourning of a relationship, uh, once you get through to the other side of that, you know, search for your own happiness. Mm -hmm. It seems like absurd that you would still regret making that decision. But if by some chance you do, I'm sorry that you you made that choice and it turned out to be the wrong choice. Lots of us make mistakes. We do the wrong things and we pay the price. Yeah. I I would say um, I would like to get the opportunity to go back Mm. and knowing better because obviously we're growing you know um yeah. sometimes i i look you know on my past relations in long term and i'm like you know i should have done this like this or um the other way um but i believe that you know things happen for a reason right yeah uh, things happen for a reason and Maybe people grow and and it's okay to grow, right? Well, I, uh, and that's the thing. Like I'm not I'm not a big believer in the whole things happen for a reason mm-hmm. thing, right? But I do think that people grow, and that sometimes you grow apart and sometimes you grow together. And this is how things work. This is how life goes, and you're allowed to move on. If you <laughs> do you do you feel sometimes regrets of um, being the person you were? with like your past partners yes 
but not because I want to be back with those people. Exactly. But because right. I regret the kind of person that I was. Because exactly. Because I regret the mistakes that I made. Yes. Of course. Yes. That's a normal human response, right? Yes. As, a, yeah. as an honest, growing individual. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't think that... I don't think that that justifies staying in a relationship that is unhappy. Because, again, the goal is not to divorce, right? Yeah. The goal is we are all looking for love, right? Are you okay? Yeah. We are all looking for love. We are all looking for uh, stability. We are all looking, you know, for um, uh, a partner, yep. you know, that's going to be complement, com- that's right. complaining. Yeah. Com- Complimenting. Complimenting us. Um, we don't go with someone wanting to divorce no. them. We don't enter in a relationship <laughs> wanting to divorce. Planning to divorce. This no. needs to be clear, yeah. right? Yeah. When we say that we promote divorce, this doesn't concern a single person. Yeah. This concerns a person who is in a relationship already. Yeah, that's right. Who, who would like who's to quit unhappy it. about that relationship and wants to leave it. <laughs> I think that we had to make that to make that clear. We promote divorce for unhappy people in marriages that are not for them. We're what but what is it to be like, unhappy? Okay, let's let's let let me give you an example. Okay. Tomorrow I'm pretty sick. Okay. Pretty sick and. Uh, my health condition gonna require that you know we be fighting with some medical um, you know issues. I'm not gonna be happy doing that. Right. You're not gonna be happy doing that. Right. Is it what we understand from unhappy marriages? No, no. I I think that I think that would be pretty selfish, right? To be like you know thinking of myself while you're sick, like. Although there's there's got to be a limit to that as well, right? Like because you're not obligated to take care of someone just for the sake of because they're sick and you're well. Uh, I mean, it's, it's something that you do because because you care because you care, yeah, right? Because you care about that person's well being, not out of pity. No, but literally just because you like love them and you want them to feel well and you want to take care of them, mm-hmm. like. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> these things, I we saw this list, and I thought these are not terribly good arguments <laughs> against the act of being divorced. What can be the good, the best argument? I don't think there is a good argument from withholding. Okay, with it's because divorce. you believe in the necessity of divorce, and I believe as well in making it even easier to divorce because honestly i find that sometimes it's pretty hard hard yeah, yeah, to do right. when honestly it should be as easy as it is to love because it's something that concerns adults mm-hmm. yep adults our who consent can is required to do the things consent is required to you know if you don't want to stay in that marriage feel free to leave feel free I think so. So this is what we think. This is uh, our take on divorce. <laughs> Thank you very much if you watched until here. Is there anything that surprised you or um, a point where you are yeah. uh, against <laughs> what we were saying or you uh, think that we were right on a point? Share that in our comments and uh, let's grow the discussion. Okay. Yeah, I don't want anybody to take my uh, some of my views on religion too personally. I don't condemn people for believing things. I think everybody should have the right to believe what they want and that none of us should be able to impose our beliefs on others. So yes. that includes religious views about divorce or marriage or... Or what have you. This is, th- these are just our ideas, right? And uh, no one is obliged to think like us. But hey, we are in the world <laughs> where we can share what we think and what That's we believe right. in. So, when can people find you? Oh, I guess I'm uh, at Skeptical Lefty or at Skeptical Leftist pretty much everywhere. And uh, I have a website, SkepticalLeftist.com. You can join me on uh, Instagram, Pamela Kazikari, and uh, on uh, I uh, on uh, X, Twitter, 
Trailer. <laughs> At ikigata nyakazi. Donde is a mangate. <laughs> All right. See you next time.